Okay, how are we all doing? <clears throat> all right, so here, in this video, I'm going to uh, demonstrate triple P, basically. So this is chapter two of CCNA four, and so um, so we've basically we've got a, a topology here with three routers, each with a LAN on them, and so and a serial links are what hooking them together, and so uh, when it comes to the setup for those routers. It's all pretty much default at the moment. And show run. And so the serial interfaces have just got a very basic setup at the moment. So I haven't done anything fancy at all. They've just got an IP address. When one needs a clock rate, they get one, and that's about it. And there is RIP running on these routers as well. So uh, just so that uh, we have connectivity between the different uh, networks. Okay, so if we do show IP route, that'll show us that RIP is working. As you can see, it's learning the other routes. Um, so we've got these routes here learnt. Uh, and uh, of course, we can do show interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. And we can see that HDLC is the WAN encapsulation on this interface at the moment so uh, so of course that is the default setting and so uh, of course a, a downside of HDLC at least standards based HDLC is that there's um, um, no support for multiple uh, protocols so layer 3 protocols typically we think of and so of course with HDLC um, there was no field to keep track of the higher layer protocol and so many vendors have sort of added features to HDLC, but they've all done it their own different little ways. And so they're not uh, compatible with one another. And so, uh, so Cisco has of course done this as well. And so their HDLC, their customized HDLC is not compatible with any other vendors customized HDLC. And so they can't talk to one another. And so of course, um, um, so of course, um, back in you know twenty odd twenty or more years ago, uh, people used to have IP of course running for to connect connect to the internet, and you'd also have things like IPX running, you know, or Apple Talk or whatever networking solution you had, and so you needed more than one protocol, and that was why they did this uh, patch to HDLC to be able to support it. But of course them being non-compatible was certainly a downside and so that's when um, triple p was developed point-to-point -point protocol and that has that functionality built in in a standards based solution and so that's why if you're going to hook cisco routers using a serial link to other uh, vendors equipment you you'll have to use triple p typically to be able to get that done all right so how do we configure triple p it's not hard and so encapsulation triple p is all you need to do and that will actually get it done. Now let's have a bit of a closer look at the uh, topology as we're going to go. And so there's three WAN links, and so each of them is going to be configured a little differently. I haven't turned the video on. Oh well. Um, and so this link across the top is going to be uh, remain as HDLC, and then this link between R2 and R3 is going to be triple P, and it's also going to have some authentication and configured on it. So pat password password authentication protocol. So that's the lightweight version, less secure version. And this of this link here between R1 and R3 is going to have triple P as well, but it'll have a more um, the the stronger version of authentication. So challenge handshake authentication protocol. So of course, hopefully you've watched the videos for chapter two, and uh, so this isn't all completely new to you. Or of course, if you've looked at the curriculum, and so, um, so the settings I've got here, uh, this link here is going to is between S triple zero on both of these routers, and so that's why I've commented out encapsulation triple P for this, for the first for routers one and two, and then I'll actually uncomment it for router three. And so let's throw some configuration into the routers. So. Um, when I first do it, of course, the uh, the one that I configured triple P for is going to go down because they've got two different product uh, data link layer protocols, and so 
yeah, S001 has changed state to down because, yeah, they're not happy. But anyway, once we've configured all of them, it should be a lot happier. Uh, and so with router 2, let's widen this a bit as well. We'll do a copy paste as well. And so again, 001 has gone down because, of course, they're the links that point at router 3. And so that is still running HDLC. And on, I'll just edit this, get rid of that comment. And both interfaces on router three need to be triple P. Now what happened? Why didn't why didn't that delete? I don't know. So we'll get both interfaces on router three configured. And so as you can see, now both of the links have gone up. You, they, they'd gone down previously, but now that both ends of both of those links are now running triple P, all seems happy again. And so, as you can see, we've got the line protocol up message. So let's do have a look at the routing table again. And we have routes, which is a very good situation to be in. Okay. So, um, yes, so that's good. So if we look at show int s0 slash 0 slash 1, that's the one that's been configured. As you can see, we've now got encapsulation triple P. We do have line protocol up. And you'll notice that if you've looked at chapter 2, that there's the LCP, link control protocol. It has negotiated and it's up. And it's also got two NCP protocols running as well. One IPCP, so IPv4 running on it. And it's got CDP, so Cisco Discovery Protocol, control protocol. And so that's, of course, using that link. And so there's a special control protocol for that that Cisco's developed. And so if I had IPv6 running, that'd be IPv6 CP as well. And so, and so uh, that would be another one. And so that's actually how Triple P supports those multiple protocols is by having a, a specialized uh, CP control protocol, NCP, uh, for each layer three protocol that it uses. So I don't think there's any too much else uh, information other than these three lines for triple P. I don't think there's really much there. No, that's pretty much it. Um, and so everything seems to be happy. Now, this host here is 3.10. Let's try and ping it. Uh, so desktop. Ping 192.168.3.10. Hopefully this works. Probably be an ARP request or two we're waiting on, but all good. Suppose we could do trace route. 192.168.3.10. No, it's gone through three routers. Very, oh no, two routers and the, and the host itself, sorry. Um, okay, so that seems to be a happy running network with Triple P running on, on these two links quite happily. All right, so we haven't done authentication yet though. So first we'll look at PAP. Now, with a password, well, actually with any authentication protocol, the first thing you need to do is you need to set up a local user database. And so I'm using simplified ones here. So R1, R2, R3 is the usernames and the password Cisco123. Now I'm also doing, there is no router for, but I'm just giving an example of another way you could define the passwords. And that's with the secret command. Of course, that will actually hash the, the uh, password when it's put in, much the same as the enable secret password. So there, there the uh, user accounts created, and then we need to configure the interfaces. And so um, I might have to change the interfaces depending on, let's have a quick look at them. This is the one that's got PAP, that's S000, that's S001. 
No, we'll do Raider 3 first then. Now, on the interface that you're configuring, so in this case, it'll be S000, which of course is this one here. You need to configure Triple P Authentication PAP. And then you need this, with PAP, you do a sent username command as well. So Triple P PAP sent username of R3. Of course, that's the router we're sitting on and, and its password. And so I've commented this out because that's the configuration for router two. So let's now, of course, when I paste this in the first router, it will, ah, oh, I need to paste all of it in, don't I? I need the usernames as well. Uh, and so, of course, when I paste this into the first router, it will take that link down. Um, and so, as I said, the link is down. But if we look at do a show run, um, you'll notice that the usernames have been created. And that example that I gave for R4 as well, as you can see, because it's secret, it's using a hash of five, which of course is MD5, and that is the resultant hash. All right, now, if we look at the serial interface, you'll notice that instead of just plain old triple P authentication, which of course is the other interface that hasn't been configured yet, for authentication at least, we've got that line still, but we've added in these commands as well. Now, of course, the interface is down because R3 wants to authenticate, but R2 does not. So I'll have to edit this to uh, get it to work with R2. Oops. Need to comment that out. Need to comment that out. And put that one back in. So, of course, R2 needs to send its details to R3. So, of course, we'll do this. Copy R2. Paste. Now, because I've used usernames that uh, are consistent with uh, CHAP, that doesn't lock it particularly much, but it's not necessarily a problem. Now, let's do show int s0 slash 0 slash 1. <sighs> okay, we might have to cycle the configuration. Let's do debug, oops, not IP, triple P authentication. And so we might actually get some messages when we do the downs and ups. So conf t int s0 slash 0 slash 1. And we'll do a shut. So I've turned it off. Then we can do a no shut. Yep. We'll do a no shut. That should turn it on. And you can actually see that the authentication messages have come up. Um, and you can also see the interface has come up. Um, and so. And so using name from interface, using password from interface. And so we've got auth authentication request, authenticating peer, and it all seemed to work quite nicely. So let's go back to the host again. Let's see if that ping works again. All good. All right, now let's look at CHAP. Now, CHAP um, is a little different. Now, what CHAP uses, sorry, just scroll this up a bit. What CHAP uses, uh, it actually sends the enable password. And so I've set an enable secret, secret command and I've set an enable password command. And the only reason you'd actually set an enable password command if you've already done an enable secret is that is what gets used for authentication. And so um, basically, uh, if you have both, when it comes to authenticating into, you know, uh, privilege exec mode, it will always use the enable secret command, but this is actually what's sent over the cable 
And so then, of course, we still need to set up the user accounts as per how we did in the previous solution. But all we need to do is actually just go triple P authentication chap. And so uh, it actually uses the host name of the host as the username and it uses the pass the enabled password as the password. So you actually don't need to configure it. So you don't need to do the sent stuff like you do with PAP. With this, you just need to say, let's do some chap authentication and it will work. And so you don't have to do this sent username and password stuff. All right, now. Now from memory, I think these are both the same interface. Yes, 001, so that's convenient for us. And so we'll set this up on both routers one and router three. Copy. So of course, again, router one wants to authenticate. Router three does not want to authenticate on that interface and certainly not using CHAP. Um, now, I might do the debug PPP authentication here first, and then I'll paste in the config. Now, sometimes it doesn't sort of activate automatically. If we do show int s0 slash 0 slash 1. Uh, Yeah, it's disabled, so I might have to do the same thing again. Conf t int s0 slash 0 slash 1. We'll do a shut. Admin down, no shut. We'll, of course, start it up, and that the debugging messages should come through, and it has. And so you can notice that the, the uh, interface is now up, and you can see that there's... Uh, there's a configuration request and then an acknowledgement and away it's gone. And so this is all through IPCP. And so, um, yeah, it seems to be working. Now, uh, we'll do end. Let's do uh, ba -ba 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 show IP route. Seem to have all the networks, one, two, three, and four, plus five and six. That's all we've got. And uh, now let's, which router am I using? Three. I'm assuming this is 1.10. Yes, it is. Let's try and ping 1.10. Okay, must have been an art request. And so it's all working. And so if we do show interface s0 slash 0 slash 1, um, again, you don't get anything greatly different with the authentication. But if we do a show run, um, and so of course, this is the interface that's configured for PAP. So as you can see, it's got the triple P authentication PAP and then the sent username and, and password. Here, for this interface, we've just got triple P authentication chap. And that's all you need to do, of course. We still need to have these, the local user database set up for it to work. So um, that's pretty much all I was going to demo for this chapter. That's um, pretty much most of the chapter. Um, and so... I'm going to say Triple P is a very useful protocol. It is based on HDLC. The frame format is very similar, um, but of course, it's different enough that they're not compatible with one another. And so, as you saw, when I configured one end of a link to Triple P, it actually killed the entire link. So they're not compatible, but they are, as many WAN protocols are, they're actually based on HDLC. HDLC is sort of the daddy of many of them. Uh, frame relays actually that other one uh well I suppose there's one thing i didn't show you i'm not sure if i did if we do conf t int s zero slash zero slash one if i do encapsulation and then question mark on these serial interfaces you can do hdlc and that'll take it back to default we can actually just do a no encapsulation triple p we'll actually 
have the exact same result. So the only options we've got are frame relay, HDLC, and triple P. Now frame relay, I don't think you'll be doing any labs for that. We, I think we talk about it a bit, but I don't think we actually do much in the way of labs for frame relay anymore, because um, it's less and less common with you know, high bandwidth links easily available these days. Frame relay is sort of fading very fast. But, um, and also you can't do frame relay like you can do HDLC or Triple P. Frame Relay actually needs an infrastructure inside a cloud to be able to work because it's got virtual circuit numbers and all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, and so, yeah, that, that that is an option, but you actually need to set up an infrastructure. And I don't think the latest versions of Packet Tracer support it. Um, and so, of course, these are the main ones that are an option for us. So HDLC and Triple P, and uh, yeah, they, they are the options that we really have to play with when it comes to uh, Packet Tracer. Um, of course, with uh, real physical routers, of course, what protocols are supported depends on what interfaces you actually install on them. Of course, the ones in the rack in, in the room here have the, uh, have the HWICs, and so they do support Triple P or um, HDLC or frame relay, but again, you need, you actually have to set up a router as a frame relay cloud for it to work with frame relay, but anyway, um, but that's irrelevant to us these days. Um, so that's pretty much all I was planning on looking at when it comes to Triple P. Um, so this is, of course, chapter two. Chapter one was a more theoretical thing. Um, so um, yeah, that's it for today. I'll, I'll leave you with it. Have a have a nice day, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you about chapter three in the not too distant future. See you later.